It is our job as educators to make sure that we provide a loving environment, we remove barriers, and make sure that our students are learning everything that they can. In order to close some of our learning gaps that we have here at our school, we have small group instruction in ELA. We also do um, guided math groups and centers where teachers really target um, the skills that are needed based on the child's ability. Um, sometimes that's in intervention, but other times it's enrichment if a kid gets a skill and understands it. We also have created a literacy lab this year, which they get a double dip of ELA and literacy interventions. So this is for 45 minutes and it's provided by reading specialists. So we're very excited and we've seen data already showing that the gaps are closing. You know, we are raising the leaders our future leaders. So we have a big task and they deserve our absolute best every single day. So I wanna make sure that we provide that to every student that walks through our doors. I'm really drawn to rural schools because I get to work every day with students who were just like me. Um, and I really enjoy building a, a faculty that embraces the, the personalization and how much we get to get to know our kids and support their goals and dreams just the way people did for me. This is our 18th year of being one-to-one -one in Greene County and while devices have been great, devices have really unlocked the potential for us to get students thinking and experiencing things outside of a textbook or a sheet of paper. They've expanded us into our STEM program which has uh, made us the first model comprehensive high school in the state to be recognized by DPI and we've since redone that five years later. So the, this program has unlocked potential in our kids and gotten them excited about learning and gotten them to experience things outside of our small rural area and expose them to the world. All because we were able to say let's think about that a little bit different and let's get our hands dirty and do some thinking. If a student is not invested in what's taking place in the classroom, not interested in what's taking place in the classroom, they're not going to be engaged, they're not going to participate, and they're just not going to listen. So the first thing that we do at Nightdale High School is we use the tools from Capturing Kids Heart. We believe in building relationships, building community in the classroom, getting to know students for who they are. We celebrate them and find out what good things they have going on daily. We have them complete journals each day. So that way it gives us an opportunity to get to know them more. And so teachers can then cater their instruction to what students, where their current levels are. It's not just about learning the math, the English, the social studies, the sciences. It's preparing students for what they're about to take on and embark upon when they graduate from us. And if we don't prepare them, we fail them. I can remember as early as elementary school, about fourth grade, where I um, talked to the principal and told him that one day I'm gonna be a principal, but I'm gonna listen to the students. And oftentimes when students come in and, and we have conversations, I revisit that moment. What drew me to education um, was just the opportunity to help others. Um, when I grew up in poverty, that's one of the things that I found out that education was the way out. It was the way to, you know, it was the keys to get out of poverty and to lock those doors behind you without looking back. And that was my case. And um, one thing about that is that I always want to help out others when it comes to giving exposure to education and great experiences in life. And as a principal, it's my job to uh, make these opportunities for students. I coach teachers up so we can create these opportunities so that students can become college and career life ready because we have to meet them where they are and then allow them to grow from there. It takes more than just a statement of all kids can learn. It's all about the action that's behind that, that word, that statement. Um, for me, um, believing that kids can learn begins with the school leaders. It begins with us creating those parameters, creating those spaces that are safe, creating those spaces that are caring and loving. Yes, our community is impoverished. Our kids are coming to us with a lot of baggage, a lot of challenges that I don't want them to realize that those are things that they're coming with. I want them to see school and just see that you have people here that love you. I did bring my daughter with me um, to the school and people were like, are you crazy? You're taking your daughter to that school? Yes, I'm taking my daughter to this school. And if it's not good enough for her, it's not good enough for any other child in this building. 
it was important to bring her. If I can't trust myself and my leadership, then why would anybody else trust me with their kids? Every child, every single day, deserves the opportunity to be in a loving relationship with the adults in the building. And that every day, all day, we are giving them what they need through personalized learning, through social emotional learning, through physical activity and movement. Because if we build the foundation strong here at the elementary level, it will be the catalyst that kids need to be able to take it all the way through graduation at high school. All of our teachers here are leading the professional development. It's giving them an opportunity to showcase who they are and what they do. Um, and it's so much better for the staff to be able to learn from each other than from someone else. We have a lot of really wonderful things that we have put into place here at Idlewild through lots of different work and leadership of our staff through committees that have really created an environment that kids and adults want to work in and want to learn in. I'm very passionate about elevating and empowering others to lead. That's my personal, personal mission statement, but also about creating equitable learning opportunities for all students. And I believe that we do that by using our most powerful resource that we have in North Carolina, which is our teachers. Listening to teachers and, and empowering them to know that they are doing good things for their students, but also helping them to look at data and being able to think about what we can tweak or what we can implement together. That's what I'm really passionate about. Oh, I get super excited when we talk about personalized learning. So here at North Wilkes Middle School, our teachers are implementing learning pathways. It's more than about understanding what the standards are. You have to also know exactly what your students' needs are and how you're gonna be able to best make what that standard is relevant to that student, engage them, make it challenging enough that they're gonna productively struggle and grow without making them feel overwhelmed. Lead with integrity. Trust and honesty is key to building relationships with your stakeholders. Culture and relationship building is the foundation and should be the foundation of your leadership. Make sure you surround yourself with good people, but not necessarily people that are like you. As a child of a low-income family, and the first to go to college in my family, I think education is so important. Education provides an opportunity for students to change their situation and also strengthen their beliefs. Students can build their education through collaboration, thinking outside the box, problem solving, and leadership. Our teachers know our students. They know their needs. They know their strengths. They sit down with them, so they set goals, personal and academic goals, and our teachers remove barriers so that our students can reach those goals. And at the end, we celebrate. My educational philosophy really stems around the individual child. Um, the individual parents need, the individual families need, and then building a community where all of us grow and learn together. What we want to build here is what works best for the students. So when you think of per personalized learning, but then you also balance 800 students, how do I really make that work? It's bringing the right people in the right seats on the bus, allowing a third or fourth year teacher who has abilities to, for dance to not be sequestered to a third grade classroom until they work their way up. Allowing the fact that we have teachers here who are phenomenal at some of their extracurricular activities and then just embracing the balance between work and fun. And then you'd be surprised how many kids follow right along. So maybe they don't come for the math in the first period in the morning, but they love their dance class or their STEM class later on. I really think it provides a wonderful balance to what being a grown-up is going to be like too, which is what we're ultimately preparing them for. I believe that all students deserve a high quality, equitable, and personalized education. I believe that education only works if it inspires intellectual curiosity. I believe that all kids can be successful. You have to meet them where they are. I believe all students can learn given the right exposure with the right experiences. I believe that it is my job to ensure that we focus on the whole child. I believe that having a strong positive culture is the most important thing you can do in a school. I believe that we have the awesome responsibility to elevate and empower others to lead. 
I believe that education provides an opportunity for students to change their situation and also strengthen their beliefs. I believe that education should not be discerned by what schools are near you. 